Hey, hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. Welcome back to another episode, a very special episode. We're doing a live stream here with my very good friend, Jose Miguel, right? No, yes, sir. That's right. Yeah, I, just, I didn't, you know, I wanted to get, make sure I got the middle name right. <laughs> uh, but Jose Novello, um, a lot of you guys know him, have already worked with him. Uh, and you know have a lot of uh, you know good things to say about him um, and uh, and again this is why we're doing these live streams you know to get you guys informed you know we're here to help you all right make sure that you have as much information as possible so you make the best decision possible no matter what it is in today's episode we're gonna be talking about immigration that's gonna be the main topic okay yes um yeah he's a lawyer that does a bunch of things you know he does real estate <laughs> immigration right what yeah, yeah i do immigration real estate uh corporate law tax law that that's my thing right and in, 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 in other episodes we'll talk about yeah, yeah all we those will things because a lot of people are worried about taxes and you know some of you guys have tax situations and trust here, and, and right? fidecomisos right. so that's you know, the name trust, in spanish you know, that's right the trust yeah. you know for the homes and, and home you know uh corporations all that stuff and all that but, but today yeah. Immigration, because that's, I know you guys need to get out here first, right? So, <laughs> so let's do that. So, again, we already went over it a little bit, right? Who are you? So, I got some yeah. questions here. Let's see if we can do this right, okay? So, uh, who are you? Well, first of all, thank you guys. Thank you, Jose, for, for inviting me again. And thank you guys for watching uh, our first video. This is the second one we... Uh, we're, we're doing with Jose and, and God, I mean, thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. Because, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's been... I, I, I don't have the words to say it's been crazy to, to, to receive all these uh, messages and texts and, and asking uh, questions, how, uh, how I can help you guys to, to do this regarding uh, uh, the visas, the residency. Thank you so much, guys, for, for, for sending me those emails and, and texts. I, I really appreciate it. So look at that. It. You know, so, you know, again, that's how awesome he is. I mean, he's uh, saying thank you to you, all of you guys that have been uh, bombarding him, basically. Uh, thank you, guys. He's, uh, you know, he, he couldn't, you know, like, he couldn't even get it out. You know, that's how much, <laughs> yeah. that's how much you guys are out there bothering him. But again, it's not a bother, you know. He, he, you I know, love that. I right. mean, that that's that's what I do. I, I, I do consultation. And, and, and you sending me emails or text messages or calling me, for me, that's, that's, can can I say uh, bad words? You can say any kind of words you want. To me, Don't that's the shit. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, that's guys. Right. Thank you so. Much. I, I'm <laughs> I'm an attorney. Yes, I'm an attorney. Although you you can see me with my my uh, yellow uh, watch and and uh, and t-shirt. Yeah, and t-shirt. I'm an attorney. I'm a tax attorney. I've been doing this uh, for eighteen years, more or less. Uh, I'm an immigration attorney, real estate, cor corporate uh, law. This is what I do, and today we will talk about immigration. That's right. Because there's a lot of thing, there's a lot of things out there about immigration that not might be, you know, yeah, yeah, true. That, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of information out there um, that you guys know because you guys are the ones that tell me about, you know, um, all this misinformation, I yes. guess, in a sense, uh, about, you know, what's really going on out there, you know, where they're saying, oh, they're cracking down on, on mm -hmm, tourist mm -hmm. visas. Uh, they're not letting you in. Um, they're deporting people. They're, you know, constantly right. checking you and you know, all these things. And so I was like, you know, I'm not even, I'm, look, I'm, I try to answer it. I'm just a guy in a t-shirt, you know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, you know, but I don't got no law degree like him. But I, I you know what? I, I do. But, know, I know somebody that has a law degree, so I'm like, you know what? Let me bring him on, so that way he can talk to you guys. And now you have an actual lawyer, you know, not only advising you, but letting you know exactly what you need to know, instead of some other, you know, YouTuber out there, um, me included, that we're just, you know, uh, expats. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're immigrants. You know, what the hell do we know? We we know what we know, but he's the one that really knows. And okay. today, Jose is paying my fee, so <laughs> you can right. you can ask as many questions as 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 you like. And and sorry right. about my English; it's not my my first; it's not my mother language. I'll try to do my best. Of course, I'm, I'm from here. I'm from Merida, place, best place on earth. Hells right, yeah. right. Yeah. But, but I'll do my best to, um, you know, to, answer. To, yeah, to yeah, answer. Yeah, no, but you speak, speak uh, you speak really great English, man. Thanks, Don't worry bro. about Thank it. You. It's, Thank it's, you. A, it's amazing English. All right. All right. So let's get into it. Okay. So basically. Um, you know, we got the questions. Who are you? I think we covered that already. Yeah. You know, what do you do? I think we I covered so. that already. And <laughs> then, um, how can you help? So, how can you help everybody? How, what are you doing? All right. How can how can you help the average okay. viewer that is looking for uh, I don't know residency? I guess. First of all, uh, I will try to do my best to help you 
throughout this uh, um, uh, um, live, um, YouTube live. I'll try to do my best. If not, you can contact me and, and uh, ask me any question. Maybe I can help you with your, with your uh, um, problem, if there is one. Because sometimes we think we have a problem, uh, um, especially when it comes to residency. Just ask me the question. This is what I want to do. This is uh, this is my status. This is um, I, I've been in, uh, to Mexico this many times, and and we can figure it out. So um, the way I can help you today is by answering your questions. That's right. Especially uh, uh, with with the um, I was going to say real estate, but that's another episode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially so with with immigration. All right. So that's that's how I can help you. Um, Going through the process, um, perhaps uh, um, doing some legal stuff here in Mexico. Sometimes, and and this is this is new, Jose. Um, I've been uh, we've been doing uh, my team and I we've been doing um, con we've been contacting uh, the Mexican consulates abroad, and and the last time and and this is one of uh, uh, the persons that watched our last video. Okay, he's from. Uh, He's from Thailand, okay, and and, and uh, but he's living in, in Greece. I okay. won't say his name, but if you're watching this video, Shout you know, out to you. I'm, yeah, and bro, I mean, okay, now we have a connection, like awesome. like like real yeah, life so you connection. Help, I mean, so yeah, it's another thing yeah. too. There's a lot of viewers out there that come from other countries. I completely yeah, yeah. forgot. It's not just Americans and Canadians. Uh, there's people from all over the world, sure. and uh, you can he can help you. So look, I think you know you you guys know fully well how he can help you. Meaning. You know, we're going to be answering questions live today, as uh, we've done before, and we're going to continue doing in the future. But you can also, after the show, reach out to him. All the information is in the description. I'm going to put it in the comments as well. So you can reach out to him, you know, send him an email with your concern. Because as he was saying as well, um, there's a lot of people out there that are very worried for whatever yeah. reason about, you know, their immigration status. You know, meaning that they're scared that they might not qualify financially. They're scared that, you know, they might have a situation right. that might prevent them from becoming a resident or, or, or citizen or anything like that. And, uh, you know, we're here and he's here. He's here to dispel these. So a lot of you guys, remember, everyone has a unique situation. It's not, not everyone is very easy just clunk, clunk, you know, just get your visa and that's it. There's a lot of <laughs> right. people with more complicated situations. And so that's where he come in, comes in, where he can, again, be more specialized in, in helping you, you know, get over that, that hump, you know. Or, you know, again, maybe letting you know, hey, this is not really that big of a deal. This, you know, and this is why. And then just going through that. So let's get into the questions I have here. Um, what kind of visas are there we know i mean obviously you know we know that there's the tourist visa i think yep. a lot of people you know we come the fmm here, right the just regular fmm which again today as of now um in some airports like cancun um they're not even giving you the little piece of paper mm -hmm, anymore mm -hmm. they're just stamping your passport and giving you the 180 days and that's it you're that's good right. to go that's okay right. so there's a tourist visa we got the temporary yep. re uh, residency um, which you know goes you know uh, two years four years right it has one two three or four yeah okay and then you can also get your permanent residency mm -hmm. which never expires you know mm -hmm. once you're permanent you're for life you know that's you right. got your visa and then we got citizenship but you know that's advanced level you know we'll talk yeah. about that later <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. but then what other visas are there because well okay the, there's there's uh, the humanitarian visa okay mm -hmm. um but guys um Tell me a little bit more about the humanitarian. What is that? What is okay. that? Okay, okay, it, it is, it is real. Um, yeah, we know it's real, but what is it? But yeah, but uh, it only comes when when you, um, for example, you're a, uh, um, uh, uh, as I said before, sometimes it's difficult for me to translate. Uh, Refugee, uh, a political refugee. Okay, but that would be a humanitarian visa. Humanitarian, yes. Okay, it, so it does a, apply. Okay, it does. so but is that the same as asylum, or is that something else? It is the same, but uh, here's the thing: uh, to to prove that you're a, a, um, a political refugee, or or yeah, yeah, uh, you, yeah. What was the word I said? Yeah, yeah. Anyways, the word he said. Asylum, the word yeah, yeah, applying yeah, for asylum, asylum. Yeah. right? We need to prove that through a uh, not a court case, but uh, we need documents. Okay, so so basically, you need to prove. I think we've talked That's about right. it before, but like, that's again, right. I'm, I'm gonna you know maybe say it in my English, and then he can confirm or not confirm whatever. But the idea is that if you want to apply, 
you mm-hmm. know, for asylum here. You want to be able to get your, you know, your visa through, again, humanitarian uh, ways, you know. Through, right. You we know, need to prove that you've been... Uh, 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 yeah, you need... So you need documents. So, for example, you know, um, if you have been harassed by the police over exactly. and over and over again in your hometown um, by the same cops and they're making your life miserable and you and know the, that's like a situation where you can prove and Jose the problem yeah. is sometimes we don't have documents of that right. you've been harassed and, and, and I'm, I'm with you and, and trust me because this is something I've, I've been saying to uh, my clients I'm, I know it, this happened to you I just had mm-hmm. I won't say any names but I just had a client that um this lady, this nice lady, and, and her daughter have been harassed by uh, the ex-husband. Mm. But there's nothing I can do because right. there's no document. Right. And unfortunately, guys, the law needs documents. Okay, so, you know? so in the case, let's say you're running away from an abusive spouse. Um, and you can prove it because you do have documents. There's a lot of people that do. Right, right, that right. Would that, would, would that qualify that to just would, get a humanitarian? That's a humanitarian. Look at that. Because okay. you need to leave the yeah. country. You need to leave that that area yeah. because you've been harassed. And now, you know? let me ask you a question. And, and you have a, a, a case. You, yeah. ha- you have documents. You have a file. Right. And so the humanitarian visa is not just like political asylum. Uh, no. Or, the, you know, meaning, you know, that they're harassing health, you. Yeah. For example. Okay. For help. Um, if if uh, I had this case, uh, a guy from uh, um, Asia, um, this guy had some, some uh, health issues. He was here. He was living, not living, but he was here in, in the Yucatan. Okay. okay. But had some health issues. He went to the doctor here. We got everything in, in, in into the file. So we submitted the humanitarian visa because if he uh, um, took the flight back to China, then... Uh, yeah, we know. We already know. Yeah. So we don't have to get into all that, but that's a humanitarian visa. And, exactly. uh, you know, again, there's many ways that you can qualify for that visa. And the thing is that... The, that's like almost like a last resort visa because there's other right, ways right. you can get in here. Because um, he, as we were talking and he was telling me, uh, you know, there's so many ways that everyone out there can get their temporary, at least a temporary, permanent if you're lucky, but at least you're temporary um, without even having to prove any income. And and no, I'm not talking about getting married like me. As you guys know, <laughs> that's an easy, easy, easy way. Yeah. But there's other ways that you can just, you know, get your temporary visa because we were talking about this, you know, remember, um, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was telling you about the people that were scared that, because, okay, I tell a lot of you guys, hey, look, don't worry. If you can't afford to get your visa, your temporary visa, you don't have financial, you know, you don't meet the financial requirements. Um, that you can just live on a tourist visa, meaning you come out for 180 days, live here, Mm -hmm. you leave and come back, you get another 180 days, leave and come back, and you can just do that indefinitely. And so I said, I was asking him, hey, is it true that, you know, they are cracking down on people? And he actually said, yes. And but, but, I got a surprising answer. But there's a but. Yeah, so the surprising answer was that he goes, yeah, they're cracking down, but when they give you seven or 10 days instead of 180 days. There's a reason. Yeah, and the reason is they want you to go to immigration in Mexico, like yes, you know, sir. meaning your your local immigration office, wherever that is, and start the process in country, and then you should you will you will qualify for your temporary um, residency because you would have gotten it. You get what I'm saying? Uh, you know, again through their direct orders, meaning you don't need to prove financials because you already prove that you live here. You you can prove it because you know you you've been here. You come into the country constantly, you know, right? Mean? Yeah, and you have an address here, and yada yada yada. Go, and, go ahead. and the thing is this: uh, um, if if your passport. And, and this is the, the, the main thing, and this is the important thing. If your passport has stamps from 2000, 2010 uh, to 2020, 2020, if you have stamps that you've been here in Mexico for X amount of time, it doesn't matter. Uh, you don't have to stay for 180 days because this is something I've been asked. So do I have to stay 180 days or... or because I left Mexico after 30 days. No, but you, you've you been here before. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I went uh, to Mexico in 2012 for like two weeks. Does that help? Yes, it does. So if you have stamps on your passport, 
and and wait, wait, guys, because I know, I know a lot it of you. Better. You're thinking, yeah, yeah, but that was my old passport, you know. Wait, wait a second, don't leave. But if you have those stamps on your passport, all you have to do is scan those stamps and your passport while you're here in Mexico with your seven or 10 or 30 days FMM or tourist visa and apply for the temporary residency, okay? okay? Now, look, to me, that all sounds very complicated. And if that was the route, I'd probably, be, I'd probably hire him. <laughs> you have to take care of No, he that. doesn't, he doesn't. Yeah, okay, so, so yeah. So, um, but again, there's a lot of people that don't speak Spanish, right, at all. And so, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's where he would come in because he can do all this, no problem. Uh, even me with my Spanish, you know, it's still very, you know, it was, it was, it was difficult, uh, but it was easy, you know, to get my marriage, uh, you know, uh, to get it, get it through marriage. <laughs> but at the end of the day, through everything we were just explaining right now, mm -hmm. um, you can also qualify for your temporary visa mm -hmm. without having to prove financials. Now, yes. like I've said many times before on, on, on the show, the, the people that go out there and they get their... Oh, we got Gizmo out there. You know, he, he wants his visa too. He, he was born in Mexico. He was born in Mexico. Yeah. Yes, he's on he, he can give you uh, a yeah. dual citizenship. Oh, that's right. In fact, Cause he's your son. That's right. He's my son. So I could have I could have gotten it through him, you know? I got a Mexican uh. son. Anyway. Um, what was I saying about Sorry, that? Sorry, guys. <laughs> what was I saying about Yeah, that? you were saying that um, uh, by being here uh, and... and uh, oh. Yeah, so yeah, at the end seven of, and ten days. Yeah, yeah, so at the end of the day, yeah, so like um, a lot of people out there, they get the misconception and they think, hey, the only way that I can get a visa, a temporary mm -hmm. or a permanent, is that I need to qualify financially. I mm -hmm. need to have money. I need to be able to prove, you know, that I can sustain myself, you know what mm -hmm. I mean, here financially. And, uh, you know, for the cases of, let's say you're here to retire or whatever, yeah, sure, whatever. But um, because, you know, you might not be able to afford uh, the many trips back and forth, you know, health-wise, mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we've already proven, okay, that mm -hmm. anyone out there can get, at the very least, their temporary residency um, by just living here. Mm -hmm. And going through all the legal ways, right. okay, going through all the legal channels to obtain it That's legally, right. okay? That's right without a problem and they qualify like i've said before because they just live here it has nothing to do with financials you can buy your way in because again there's many of you out there that can afford to buy you know your residency mm -hmm. you know god bless you know go mm -hmm. go for it you know yeah. um and you buy you can buy it and what do i mean by buy it well that you've never stepped foot in mexico or maybe once and then uh, you go to the consulate in Denver, and then you prove, hey, I got a lot of you money. Have yeah. yeah, and so they're like, oh, great, you got a lot of money. You want to come hang out in Mexico? Great. You know, yeah, boom, it's cool. And yeah. that's it. Okay, but solvency. Yeah, that's you know. that's how it's called. If you if you have a uh, solvency, economic solvency, right? economic solvency, then you can apply for your visa. And by not the way, even you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and then so, and you know, basically you can buy your way in, which yep. is great. By the way, people can buy their way into the U.S. as another story, another video for another day, you know? <laughs> um, but, but yes, at the end of the day, and it's that's just thing. by having like $2,500 uh, a month, like yeah. average for the last 12 months, then you can apply directly at the Mexican consulate yeah. nearest you. Yeah, and that's it. So, I mean, that, yeah, so, you know, for everyone out there that cannot qualify, you know, mm -hmm. financially right off the bat, there's still options. Yes, so, sir. for example, because there's all kinds of people. And, like, and sorry, sorry, Jose. No, no, uh, no. Uh, just remember, remember that. Um, it, let's say you you uh, lost your passport, uh, passport, or um, maybe you have a new one uh, without stamps. You might be thinking, okay, I cannot fly to Mexico because I don't have the stamps on my passport, and I won't be able to get the visa or the residency don't worry you will because okay. um if if and only if you came to mexico after 2010 yeah and and, and so basically even if uh for god forbid you don't even have your passport you mm -hmm. can still get it done but the thing is, it's like, again, a lot of people are misconceptions. Oh, they're starting to use computers in Mexico. No, they've been using computers in Mexico for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. That's why, for as, and as long as you have been here since 2010, multiple times, they know. They can see, yeah, they can yeah, check yeah. the computer. Hey, Mr. Whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so they know. Yeah, so they know. You know what I mean? So they know what's up. And it's, again, mm -hmm. it's not a big deal. They, 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 uh, you know, they're not going to, you know, look, 
a lot of people um, are scared, you know, that, you know, there's a lot of, uh, oh, sorry guys. 20, is that one my of alarm. you? Is that one of you? No, guys? that was my alarm. <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys. Anyways. Just a reminder. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of people out there that unfortunately, you know, they, um, you know, they have a misconception and they're scared, you know, that they might not be able to make it out here, qualify or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of, uh, you know, they just don't want to come out here because they're scared that they're going to get deported because if they don't uh, meet the qualifications for residency, mm -hmm. um, that they're just going to get deported because their tourist visa expired and they didn't have a time, you know, chance to go, you know, renew it or whatever. Right. So let's just get into that. Can... Okay, so yeah, before I even get into that, uh, a lot of people also are scared that, you know, there are police officers, that there are immigration officers, mm -hmm. that there are all kinds of police and authority all over the city and all over the place asking mm -hmm. potential tourists or potential people for their papers. Hey, do you have your papers? Hey, do you have your FMM? Do you have your tourist visa? Can I see your temporary or permanent visa? Now, is it, yeah, exactly. Is that true or no? <laughs> No, right? It's beyond insane. <laughs> and if, by the way, if you're, if anyone does ask you for anything, what? you're, yeah, exactly. You say what? Excuse me. I don't have to provide anything, correct? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's it. And we can go deeper into that, but at the end of the day, I mean, that's yeah, not, that's there, not there, happening. There's a lot of gossip um, on the internet. No. Okay, it's a no. Okay, <laughs> it's so a no. Big no. I mean, okay, yeah. The only way that the, uh, uh, the police officer or the immigration, especially the immigration officer, but, uh, is the we, only one that can ask you for your immigration papers. Okay, so the immigration officer, where are where are they located? An immigration office, right? The immigration office, <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes uh, at the bus stop. Oh, okay. Uh, but when you come from, for example, Cancun. To Merida or Campeche, whatever, because you're quote unquote cro crossing the border yeah, yeah. between states. Sure. They might ask, okay. Provide your paperwork. Sure. And, and you would need to provide what? Just your passport, right? Your passport, and if you're uh, uh, with a tourist visa, the tourist visa. Okay, so okay. what, let's what just... happens if, because I know your next question will be, what happens if your visa expired? Your FMM expired. Okay. And you're at the bus stop. And you, you mean you're you're just okay. You're you're at the Quintana Row, you know, and mm -hmm. Yucatan border, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they stop you, the bus, mm -hmm. and they ask for papers, and your visa is expired. What? Happens? Okay. The first thing you must do is call me. Okay. Well, <laughs> That's the no, first. No, but thing. what would happen? Though? Okay. I what mean, would happen yeah, is yeah, they, yeah. they they will ask you. Uh, uh, okay. Your, your tourist visa has expired, and and this is normal in any country. Your tourist visa has expired. So you overstayed. They will take you out of the bus and uh, uh, they'll take you to the immigration office. Okay. Now, if you, if, if you have, if you're here in Mexico to get your um, residency, you must get a number, which is the N-U-T or NUT. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. The, I know it sounds crazy. Uh, nut. <laughs> the, the nut number. The nut number. Okay, N U T or in Spanish, numero único de trámite. Okay? okay. The unique. Trans the, the unique uh, uh, process. Number. Number? Unique number. Unique number. Okay. The unique. Uh, yeah, transitory number. So I'm, I'm, I'm going. Uh, I'm, I, I took this bus because I need to be in Merida on this date because I have this document saying that I will get my interview in my permanent or ter uh, um, temporary residence. Okay, okay. So, okay, okay, okay. okay. So, but, but that's okay. So, for example, let's just say that, you know, your visa is expired, but mm -hmm. you already have an appointment to get it renewed. Um, and, by, and by the way, like a tourist visa, you can get that renewed as well, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Without leaving the country. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, whatever. And so, you got your, but, you know, it's expired, but the police, you know, they stop you at that bus stop in that, you know, situation, and you provide the information that, hey, I'm going to go renew it. I got my appointment. No problem. No but, problem. But, again, let's say, let's say you don't have an appointment. Let's say that you just have your your you know your passport and okay. no visa, just your passport. You know, by the way, if you got your residency or permanent visa, no problem. You know, you just show your little card. Right, right, right. You're good. But if you have only your passport, they they might ask you for your visa, right? If you and overstayed, if you, and yes. You, and, and, well, well, I mean, you don't have a visa, so they might say, "Hey, where's your visa?" Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then you don't. 
Okay, if you have an FMM or tourist visa and it, it hasn't expired, if you have like 180 days and, uh, and you, you, you took the bus from uh, Quintana Roo to Merida and it's just been 30 days, they can access the system and see that, okay, this guy or girl has an FMM okay. and it's still valid. Look at that. So you see okay. like right there at the bus, they can just check in the computer to see if it's a real one or not. Okay, but again, let's just, again, we're in the situation that a person... Um, might not have an FMM because mm -hmm. they lost it. Mm -hmm. They can still get checked and be like, oh, okay, he doesn't have an FMM, but he has this many days. Exactly. Okay, okay, so and you lost it. Okay, so basically it's all, only if you overstayed. Now, if you overstayed, you already said they're going to take you down to the yes. immigration office. Not, yes. not the police station, right? Yes. Not the jail, mm -hmm. right? You're, no. You're not going to get deported. No. No major problem is going to happen. They're just going to take you to the little immigration office that they have, which mm -hmm. is not the regular immigration office, right? But just no. a special holding. A special. Yeah. And then what you, when you're there, they're going to fix your situation, correct? Yeah, we need so. to go through a legal process to... to either renew or get you a letter to leave the country or to get your process started okay because you don't have a process you don't have a uh, a tourist uh, sorry a, a temporary visa in process but we will have to start right so so, you, so okay so so again just okay. fyi so again you're you're on a bus now, so, sorry sure go ahead it's going to be shitty Oh, okay. All right. Because, you know, because, uh, you know, and, and the reason I, I'm saying this is because I, 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 shitty I feel... Shitty by mean, shitty by mean, like, uh, what do you mean by, like, uh, you're going to be there for days? No, well, like a couple of days. But the thing is this, I, I'm, a, I'm a people person. Yeah. Okay. So, so what I'm trying to say is that you will feel bad. Mm. Like, yeah, um, like you're you've criminal. been mistreated. And, yeah. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but no, but at the end of the day, look, let's just keep it honest. You right. effed up. You effed up, okay? And right. um, and if you know that they're checking buses, don't go on a bus. There's so other guys, ways. don't do that. Yeah, there's other Please ways. Don't there's do other that. ways. You can just yeah. literally rent a car and have somebody drive you. And, right, right, right. And so, right. for example, let's say you you know, you know need to get to Merida. Or, and again, you can do this in... But let's just say you need to travel. There's ways to travel and they're not going to ask you for any paperwork. Because... Or are they? Well, uh... Well, we, well, we, but, we but, have, but let's just finish the thought. We're gonna finish the thought. We're gonna we're gonna get back to that Be, because I want to I want to make sure we're on the on the ball here in the sense of like okay. So when they take you to the immigration office, okay, they're basically gonna either they're gonna see your situation because every situation is unique, and they're gonna be like, okay, you qualify for another tourist visa or you qualify for temporary residency, whatever you qualify for, right? We're gonna start the process now. And right. you should have done this on your own time. That's but since right. You did that's it, right. Since you did it, we're just going to do it for you now. But you're not going to get deported. You're not going to, right? It's going to be, yeah, yeah. It, it will be um, a long, mm. a long process. Yeah. Not as fast as, you yeah. know. But at the end of the day, it's like it's a lot of misconceptions. And yeah, yeah. of course it's going to suck, you know. But hey, you kind of put yourself in there. But at the very least, they're going to fix your situation. Meaning they're right. going to give you the proper visa. You know what I mean? To, to, you know, to be on your way. So no deportation or no no kind of anything like that, right? Right. Well, uh, well, unless no. you do something horrible, you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, or yeah. if it's but, but, not yeah. your first sign. If, oh, okay. So if you're a repeat offender, meaning a repeat, then, you know, a repeat habitual, um, uh, what is it? Like, I'm going to stay past my visa and not care to renew it and do whatever I want. And then and you have then to go through that process. Yeah, yeah, you're probably, yeah. Sorry, guys. Well, but again, but, I mean, but that's, yeah. that makes sense. But those are very, very extreme cases. I mean, right. you're going to be a very bad boy. But don't do that. Yeah. Call us first, you know. <laughs> and by the way, you can still get around it by calling your lawyer. Yeah. You know, better call Saul, better call Jose, right? <laughs> You know, you yeah. call him and he can take care of whatever your situation. Right, he can help right, you right. with whatever your situation. Don't get, don't get to that point. Yeah, but don't get to that point. I mean, like, come <laughs> Please. on. Please. You know, but, but at the end of the day, it's really yeah. not that big of a deal. And like, let's just say that you're traveling through car. You know, mm -hmm. if you're mm -hmm. driving, if you're driving, let's say I'm driving from the Yucatan to Cancun or the Yucatan to... Um, Oaxaca, whatever. Or Ferrero Cruz or whatever, yeah. And um, I might get stopped, you know, at some immigration, right? Yes, Checkpoint. Sir. Yeah. So what are they going to ask me for at the immigration? Okay, passport, FMM, that is still valid, or your uh, your residency. Okay. And That's so let's say, that, uh, let's say that I'm 
you know, do they check everybody in the car? Is that the thing? Not everyone. Uh, okay. Sometimes they don't even check. Okay. You know? So, but like, if they were to check, but, they're just checking the driver, if anything. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. But if they see you're, like, the driver is, like, uh, uh, Nervous, 100%, nice. yeah, Mexican, <laughs> oh, like, okay. I don't want to be, you know, like, don't get into that. No, 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 but be honest. You but if honest. he's... Uh, the profiling, like, yeah, yeah. Right, like, uh, 100% like, Mexican and you're not... They will ask for your documents. Got it. Okay, so yeah, you know, so basically, if you got a Mexican driver that looks Mexican, you know what I mean, and you know the, they they know that, you know, they're not gonna ask the Mexican for his documents. Sure. They're gonna be asking you, the passenger. Yeah, yeah. But look, long story short, at the end of the day, hope you look Mexican though. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> you're kidding. be good to go. But just look, yeah. at the end of the day, it's not even that big of a deal. You know, really, you know, these are very very extreme cases that most people are not. That's gonna, right. They're That's not right. gonna find themselves in. That's right. Because if you have been scared straight, okay, by a lot of this stuff, you will have a already been taken care of your immigration status you know meaning if you are on a tourist visa well you should have already made plans to leave and, and come back so for example let's say that i'm on my tourist visa right okay. and the only flight that i can get to go to guatemala you know to renew it is past my expiration date so for example my visa expires today but the earliest flight was a week from today or mm -hmm. five days from mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. am i gonna get in trouble or, or can I fix this at the end? My first question would be, have you been to Mexico before? Well, no. Okay, then you won't, but we need to send this uh, ticket to the immigration So office. it's not that easy. It's not meaning I, I, if, if I can't just go to the immigration yes, office. Yes, you can. The yes, you can. Okay. Uh, yes, you can. You will pay a fine, okay? And then they'll leave, uh, give you a letter to leave the country. Okay. okay? But if, if we do that with time, like I'm leaving a week after my visa expires, my FMM expires, then they will give you a letter to leave within the next seven days okay. because of that. So you will have to pay a fine. So basic. Oh, okay. So but how do you get that letter? You have to go to the airport early or something. No. Like once you get your your ticket. Oh then, yeah, your airline ticket. You yeah. Go, yeah. You go to the. Okay. So you you get your ticket. You go to the airport and you go to the immigration place. That's in the right. Airport, that's and right. And you say, hey, look, you know, um, my my I, visa. I should, yeah. Uh, my visa expires on the 15th, That's but right. my flight leaves on the 25th, so can you give so me I an exemption? And you exactly. don't and you don't have to pay. Cuz I don't want to, you know, overstay. <laughs> okay, you know and you know, but let's just say that you're a dumbass and you did not know this. You know, <laughs> by the way, not a dumbass. What you saying? Like, I didn't know this. I had no idea. Um, so, but let's just say that you get your ticket, okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you just show up to the airport, okay, mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, again, you overstayed seven days. Right. What do you What do you do there? You still go early to immigration? Yeah, and but uh, then you have to pay a fine. But they They won't let you um, leave immediately. They will send you to the immigration office. And, and uh, so they will get you a letter to leave the country, but then you, you, you have this flag. Got, okay? Oh, I did not know that either. Okay. Yeah, you'll have this flag okay. and you'll have to pay a fine. Oh. So don't do that. Okay. Just See, because let again, them know yeah, okay. in advance and wow, you'll, you'll okay. be okay. See, look, because again, look at me, you know, because you know me, I'm always like, oh, just whatever. <laughs> um, but, Stretching. Yeah. yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, there are still like little things here and there. Yeah. But at the end, but again, it's very simple. You know what I mean? And again, it, it, it may, may not be seven days. It might be two weeks. It might be, because you know, you might be flying to some But really, that's the next, yeah. Yeah, and so they, hey, flight. that's the next flight. So it doesn't matter. You just, again, you get your... But make sure that it is the time. next flight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they'll check. Yeah, so yeah. for sure. And that's it. But at the end of the day, you know what I mean? You'll, you know, you'll be able to, to, to get it rectified. It's really not that big of a right, deal. Right, even exactly. if you, Even if you're a bad boy, you know what I mean? And you go through the through uh, through the airport, you go through the whole process or whatever, um, and they, um, what you might call it, you pay the fine, you, mm -hmm. and you still get a little red flag. Again, it's it's a big deal, but it's not really that big yeah, of a deal. Exactly, you know? exactly. Okay. You know, yeah, they, they won't take you to jail. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, okay, this guy overstayed because he likes Mexico so much. I mean, it's not really like... Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, right? Because that's yeah, kind of basically yeah. the reason. You know, that's what, yeah. Okay, so I mean, again, no real reason to be worried out there mm -hmm. because I know again, there's so many people so worried about so yeah. many, you know, so many of these things. You know, when it comes to uh, you know the visas and uh, deportation and how am I, am I going to get in trouble and you know all of these things. So I'm, I'm glad we kind of covered that. Um, I'm trying to see if um, I'm missing anything there. You know, on the whole visa situation. Do you think uh, anything else you might want to add there? Um, no, I think 
I answer all the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? When it comes to the visa. Okay, so, you know, again, even if you're on your expired visa, you know, you'll be able to, again, get that rectified. If, um, you know, again, you're stuck, um, you know, uh, what do it, you, you, okay, okay, so we were talking about earlier that nobody out there, okay, so no police officer, no authority figure is ever going to ask you for immigration papers, only at the immigration checkpoints. They should, yeah, they shouldn't. And if they ask, look, Here's my passport. This is my, my yeah. ID. And that's it. And that's it. Yeah. If they if they ask, okay, where's your FMM or your temporary residency or your permanent residency? If you have it, then you can show it. Okay. But that's just uh, extreme. Yeah. And but and, and again, violation of your rights. That, exactly. So only only the immigration can can ask you for the only that. reason they can ask is for uh, DUI or okay. or an accident or you know and things like that. And yeah. by the way, you know, speaking of DUIs out here, they're not even that strict. You know, in mm -hmm. the U.S. you get a DUI and it's like you already know. Yeah. It could be hell on, hell on earth, <laughs> but out here it's not even a big thing. They just throw you in the drunk tank, right? For <laughs> yeah. Three days, you know, and basically impound yeah. your car, pay a bunch of fines, but that's <laughs> and it. That's it. Now, if you're a habitual drinker and driver, then you get in bigger trouble. Yeah. Really? Or yes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hope so. <laughs> you know? and, and yeah. I hope so. All right. Anyways, um, okay. You know, I think right now. Um, you know, let's go through um, the chat. How about sure. that? Sure. Sounds good. And let's see what questions we have. Yeah, because we have a few minutes. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Look, look, the first question, okay? You know, straight up. Someone says, Ur Urbican TV says cannabis. You know cannabis, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Is it legal for tourists? Is it legal? How, what's the deal with that? Okay. Um, there is a... a an I, I don't know how to say this in English. Say it in Spanish and I can translate. Are you not... Uh, Porción, una cantidad que, que tu, de, de, there's, a, there, okay, there's an amount that you can have legally without any repercussions. That's right. And, which and, is? And it's in, uh, it's in the law, okay? Which is, um, I don't know how to translate it into pounds, but... No, just say, what um, was it five grams or no? More or less. But I thought yes. it was more. I thought they, they, they because as because we, it's, it's a lot been of, increasing yeah, because look, lately, but long, still, it's still in, in the Congress. Okay, so long story short. You know what I mean? Um, at the, a while ago, it was five grams, okay? Um, but as of now, I think it's more because as... Okay, what's, what happened is that they made it legal mm -hmm. a while, like years ago. Yeah. But since everything is so slow in Mexico... But, but for own uh, uh, personal use. use. Yeah, personal, personal use. Yeah, yeah. No problem. You know, but since... You cannot sell it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't sell it. You can't do businesses with it. You can't do many things like that. Um, not you know, yet. Yeah, not yet. Not you know yet. I mean? But that's... But it's, it's also in... Uh, it's been discussed in the Congress. Yeah. So basically, long story short, you know what I mean? Um, the question is asked, you know, um, is it legal for visitors? Yeah, it's legal for visitors to consume it. Yeah. But you got to figure out a way to get it, you know? Um, hopefully, a friend, you know, has some while you're out here and they can share and you're good to go. It's all legal. And how much can you have on you and legally not get in trouble? That's right. You know, I've I known friends, okay, that have had an ounce or more and... They just take it away and be on your way. You know what I mean? Like, no big deal. Um, but at the end of the day, what I, was, what I was saying is that as the Congress and the, the government officials take longer and longer and longer to legislate on this, um, it just becomes more free. Meaning, you know, you can have more quantities, you know, as time passes. You know, they're even less restrictive. You know what I mean? Whether or not they're going to, you know, really arrest you or not arrest you or, you know, put you through some kind of situation. But at the end of the day, it's like almost an unarrestable offense here unless you have a lot of weed, you know, like, mm -hmm. I mean, kilos and kilos of weed, right, no. you know, um, but other Don't than do that, that. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, if you do that, I mean, come on, it's another story, you know, but long story short, you know, I mean, for any recreational user out there or medicinal user, mm -hmm. you are fine and you're yeah. covered. Um, but again, it's, it just gets a little tricky right now because right now, you know, it, it, the law, you know, what it says in the Congress is that everybody needs to have a license. And so, okay, great. Where can I get my license? They're not providing a license, you know? Not and yet. so the best that you can do is that you can apply for the license, send it out, and have the paperwork and, and documentation done. Yeah. And in case anything happens, you know, a worst case scenario, then you can just basically say, hey, look, I got my paperwork that says, you know what I mean? I got, I'm, I'm in the process of getting the license. It's not my fault that you guys haven't gotten your stuff together, you know, to send me my license. But I'm legal, all the way legal. As a tourist, again... No problem. You're not going to be carrying humongous amounts in which, you know, you're going to be, you know, getting in trouble with or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for recreational, it's 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 not a big yeah, deal. Yeah, exactly. Legal. The it's only legal. thing is you cannot sell it right. uh, or have it stored and, and, and sell it. Not, not yeah, yeah, yet. no selling. You just cannot sell. And, uh, yeah. 
you know, but again, there's there's uh, many ways around that. Like um, if anyone's familiar with the laws, how they developed in the U.S. and Canada, you know, similar situation. It just was a little quicker and there was always ways around it. No big deal. OK, because at the end of the day, it's it's not really like uh, an illegal substance like it right, was right, before. Right, right. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So it's not it's not that big of a deal <clears throat> in, this, in that sense. By the way, shout out to, to Lunar for the two dollars and shout out to Maze One for the for the two dollars super chats. Shout out to both of you guys. But. Again, it's, it, it, I, from what I've already read and heard in other parts of Mexico, um, like Oaxaca, it's free. It's everywhere. You know what I mean? It's not even a big deal. Chiapas. And Chiapas, you know what I mean? And uh, in Mexico City, they already have like certain zones, you know, where they, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, where you can go and, and purchase and this and that, you know, probably provide a donation and, uh, you know, donation, exactly. And you get the donation and they, they, they give you, uh, you know, for free, you know, they give you like, like whatever. Yeah. Two cigars. Yeah, yeah. What I, so, you know, there's a lot, it's, it's developing, but again, anyone that knows Mexico, things are just in a different pace out here. They go a little slower. That's right. But at the end of the day, you don't have to worry about any real big legal repercussions you know and now any other drug yes they're very strict on you know they oh, catch yeah. you, if they catch you with other drugs or other oh you if know. they catch you with a, a small bag of of anything cocaine for <laughs> example yeah. Uh -huh, yeah i don't know if it if I'm allowed to say that. Yeah, you can say, yeah, 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 of course, of they, course. They, they'll oh. arrest you. And, no, and they'll probably yeah. deport you, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. Remember, Watch because out. let's not forget, there's a drug war going on. And let's, again, let's not get into all that now. Um, but, out. you know, there's a whole situation with that. So they're very um, strict when it comes to that. But that's it. That's the only thing they're really yeah. strict with out here. They're not strict on anything. Again, I... Uh, the other day, I had to register my car. Okay, I remember oh, you know, all the, the whole thing. And I finally... Did, and by the way, when I was almost done registering the car, they asked me, hey... Can you provide your license? And I'm like, did I tell you or no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Uh, fuck. Because I, I'm, I had all, the only license I had at the, at the moment was my expired California license. And by the way, the DMV is run by police officers there. So basically, I'm in the police station. Everyone, everyone there is a police officer. The police officer is asking me, you have your license? And I'm like, uh, you know, so I just give him my expired license. He goes, hey, you know this is expired, right? And in California, by the way, and I'm like, yeah, I know. I just haven't had a chance to renew it. I mean, you know, it's just hectic and crazy, the pandemic. And he's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Look, but make sure, you know, to renew it. You know, to make sure you get your, your license, you know, when, you know, that, yada, yada. And that's it. It was no big deal. In fact, the only thing I should really have it for, or, you know, make sure I have oh, it. Yeah. I already got it. But, for you know, the, it's for insurance. insurance. Yeah. For insurance. <laughs> that's another situation. Yeah, oh, we'll but, talk about that in another episode. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. but it wasn't a big deal. You know, it really wasn't that big of a deal. And I was surprised by how not big of a deal it was. Oh, I mean, yeah. and, uh, yeah, and it was all easy, <coughs> hunky dory. I mean, you know, it sucked. You're at the DMV. You know what I mean, you're at the, you know, motor vehicles, you know, registering a car, getting car tags, doing all that. It's never going to be fun. But I was, you know, uh, pleasantly surprised by how easy it actually oh. was, you know. Uh, and by the way, I was the last one to leave. Oh, yeah? I literally. <laughs> you know, there's like, I mean, you know, because you see it on the newspapers. Like, dude, the, the lines, my yeah, car? Yeah, because a lot of people are like, it's, it's a whole thing. But there's like, you know, an, there's a lot of people at the DMV now trying to renew and get all their stuff. Because they were closed for a long time because of the pandemic. And then, you know, a lot of people didn't have to renew or get their tags. And right, now, right, And right. now they're saying everybody got to get their tags. Everybody's like, oh, crap. You know, Within the next 60 days. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's <laughs> out there, you know, doing the whole thing. And so... Um, and so it's inc it's crazy like it's like thousands of people a day Dude. are there and anyways I was the last it's one to freaking leave when I left I was literally the last one and I was saying it like a joke you know because it's my, just crazy yeah my situation was a little bit more complicated because again I had a really old car with an old title and Dude. they were you know and then on top of that like um, I'm a foreigner so you know all this stuff and so yeah long story short I was I remember I was talking to Christian it's like watch I'm gonna be the last one to leave sure <laughs> I swear to God I was the last one to leave man um, and the only people that were left there were people that are gonna go visit the people. <laughs> at the prison you know like or you know or trying to get their car out of the you know out of the impound or whatever you know? <laughs> right. but anyways uh okay so i think we covered all that so now let's, let's yes just sir go. yeah let's get sure. into the questions okay all right all right so we already did the the cannabis one i think uh, hope see. hope these are like easy questions for yeah, me yeah, to yeah. answer i think so yeah <laughs> I'm hopefully. Just... hopefully all right maze one says hi my partner and i recently got temporary visa in our mm -hmm. US passports. Mm -hmm. We want to get married. Should we wait to get married until we get our residency cards at INM? Oh, okay, okay. So you both have temporary visas mm -hmm. and you're going to want to get married. So, yeah, you should wait to both have. Or, oh, yeah, they're, they're asking you. They don't have the card yet. They're waiting for the card, for the temporary visa card. But can they start the process of getting married? Oh, okay. So, 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 okay. Let. Let me see if I got this straight. Okay. So each of you have 
the visa stamp on your passports. Am I right? Because um, you have the temporary visas on your passports, but, but that's independent. If that's the case, you don't have to, if that's the case, again, if each of you on your passports have your, um, the, the, the paper visa, that's how I call it, the paper visa stamped on your passport, you don't have to wait till, uh, until you get married to, get, to, to come here and get the card. You can come here and get the residency because you already have on your passport the visa. But let me know. If, okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. So, like, so he says yes. Yeah, I'm a little confused. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, the whole, uh, Maze one. Did he answer your question? If not, write it again and we'll. Please, know. Maze, Maze yeah, yeah, one. No, no, we are. Yes. I'm a little confused, okay? So, yeah. so, so uh, the thing is this if, if each of you have your, your uh, um, temporary visas stamp, stamped on your passport, on your passport. But you mean the con here? Is that what you mean? The, the con here? There's. Yes. Yeah, but wouldn't you want to get the con here first and then get married? The thing is, uh, he says that I res res recently got my temporary visa. I want to know well, whether, whether you should, we should wait. wait. No, if you already have uh, um, the, the temporary visa stamped on your passport, you don't have to wait till you get uh, the cards at the immigration office. You can get married. Uh, to get married. You can just get married. Yeah, because yeah. cause it will be independent. Yeah, even if you're on tourist visas, you can get it. You know, you can marry, get married. In, so, like, for right, two, tourists, right. two tourists can get married in Mexico, right? I want to know yeah. whether we should wait. Yeah. Okay. No, no. If you already, if you, we don't have the physical car set. Yeah, but, but if your passports, both of you have stamped on your passports the temporary visa uh, it's a paper that they stamped on your passport if you both have that on your passport you don't have to wait okay. you can get the card first and then get married or get married and then get the card it doesn't matter because it, it the came... information is the same information exactly yeah, you're already in the system that's it you exactly. just you know you just gotta go through now the motions. yeah if only one of you guys have that passport or sorry that no, uh, that, that temporary visa stamped on your passport then you can get the pass you can get the, the card get married or get married now but if you get married now what you have to do and this is this is this information goes to everyone that has a temporary visa stamped on, on their passport or has a residency already a, a card already in in their hands if you if you get married to a u.s canadian european chinese asian whatever what you need to do is to get your card first have your marriage certificate translated to spanish mm. and make sure that the names are written correctly in your marriage certificate your passport and your card okay. okay translate it to spanish get it notarized by a u.s canadian european asian notary and then get it apostillado no, there is no translation Apo for that. Apostle. apostle apostle or legalized mm -hmm. depending on your country that document will grant your partner your spouse a visa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay. And uh, so, and then, like, but again, this is like a very rare case. But damn, it can still be done. But, by the way, yeah. congratulations to Maze One for getting married. By the yeah. way, shout out to you. Uh, but again, you know, that, that brings a question to mind. Uh, so, for example, let's say that a family structure, four people, you know, uh, okay. mom, dad, two kids, and uh, dad is the only one that qualified for a temporary visa. Can he um, now, um, you know, he got the temporary visa, but mm -hmm. can he now... The, the um, dad I, got the temporary visa. Yeah, yeah, the dad got the temporary visa, but can now, I'm sorry, can the kids and the mom also now get their temporary visa through vehículo familial? Yes, sir. Okay, so basically, again, family of four, only the dad qualifies, he gets a temporary visa, and then once he gets a temporary visa, everybody else in the family can get theirs through the fam family structure visa, whatever. Yes, they can. I already explained it uh, with the marriage certificate or birth certificate for the kids, 
translated, get it notarized, get the apostille or legalized. Yeah, the, the apostle. That, that is very, very yeah. important because that's the way we can link the spouse and the kids right. to that um, card. Yeah, okay. And by the way, that brings up a great question because now he's talking about apostles. So um, there's a lot of people that are, they're going to need documents, apostles. They're going to need mm -hmm. documents from the U.S. They're going to need all this. And there's other people that don't. Mm -hmm. So, like, I guess... What, because there's so many different situations. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure whether you need to get your documents apostled or not for your residency, reach out to him, especially if you have not left your country yet. Right, right, because right. once you leave the country, it's harder to get. You can still get it, but it's a lot you more. Still, it's yeah. more expensive is what I'm saying. But you yeah. can still get it. But it, but if you're in your country, in your state, in your situation, in your, you know, back home, um, you can reach out to him. Let him know, hey, look, this is my situation. Do I need to get documents that are apostled or not? Do I need to get, what do I need document-wise, you know, when I, before I leave? And then he can let you know you need Mm -hmm. This is what you need. And you can just get it easier, you know, and, and, right. and cheaper there. So, you know, that's, you know, that's a great question because, again, not everybody needs a postal. I thought everybody, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I thought everybody did, but then I started seeing a bunch of people that never needed it and never got it. But, the, but there are situations. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. So basically, I have a lot yeah, of basically fun. anything with marriage, family, the marriage, family situation, you're for sure. You must. Yeah. It's a must. But not like um, the person that is on a visa over and over again. You know, oh, no, no. You're, meaning like the, yeah. like the tourist visa. If you don't have a family that that will need like like um, use your 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 uh, residency to get theirs, you don't have to worry about. Okay, that. so like if you're if you are gonna apply and and gonna go through financial economic solvency, mm -hmm. um, prove it that way. You yeah. don't need a password. Well, hey guys, I just I just had this case, and and now that okay. now that you mentioned, um, a guy contacted contacted me from uh, he, he's in the US okay okay um, his mom she lives in the US but she was born in Belize okay okay her mom was born in Mexico ah so he his grandmother was born in Mexico okay he's from the US mom his mom's from Belize yeah. but his grandmother, she's from Mexico. So what we did, we, we reverse um, engineering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First, we got the mom's. Um, yeah, um, birth certificate information, yeah. Dude, it was awesome. Because, yeah. okay, we, we translated, certified it, and yeah. all that stuff. But now, we're just this close to get his. Because he wants to move yeah. down. And listen to this. Because but you had to get the moms, and then once you had the moms' information, you went to go get the grandmas. Well, not exactly. Okay, okay. The reason is this: his mom, she wants to be Mexican also. Okay. But in the law, the law says that uh, you can go two um, um, family members, uh, two yeah, generations, two, two generations, two. right? So he can he can actually uh, uh, apply for. This is a special case, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can apply for his dual citizenship because of his grandmother. Wow, okay. But now we're just... Uh, uh, mom. We just hit doubled, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mom and, 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 uh, and, and him. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So, so in case you have a family member that was born in Mexico, it's easier. So yeah, so but okay, so but did they, yeah. did they need the apostle? Oh, yeah. Okay, so... Translation, again, notarized... Yeah. Okay, so so again, and and listen to this: yeah. the grandmother she had like five names. Oh wow! Like okay. five different names, bro. <laughs> like five different names. Oh man! So we had we had to make a right. letter, like explaining uh, uh, which of the, the names, foreign yeah. yeah the foreign affairs ministry that yeah. is the same person, you know. Interesting. That's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he, he's a. So long story short. He's a miracle worker, and he can get it done no matter how difficult your situation is. But yeah, okay. So, so basically, like by the way, that's a good thing. Like a lot of people are out there want to get the double citizenship. If it or, were easy, yeah, I already. Yeah, exactly. If it was easy, yeah, you'd be out of business, right? Oh yeah, that's true. But like, um, but that yeah, yeah. Long story short, yeah. So like, um, you know, if you got like two generations again, grandma right. was born in Mexico, or Mexico, grandma yeah. was Mexican, you can get your dual citizenship and right. you can get your thing. But you're still gonna need a possible grandma yeah. or parents. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, again, I got married. That's family structured. So I also need apostle. Uh, again, right, you know, a right. family of four that comes out here. Dad gets temporary. All the kids want it. 
you know, they also got to get apostled. But let's just say the guy that was on the 180 day visa over and over again, and then he got the 10 day visa. Or and they told if your him, child is born in Mexico. Got it. Okay. That's a, that's okay. So if your child is, is also automatic. But again, the 180 day habitual guy, you know what I mean? That basically got 10 days and told, hey, you got to go to immigration, you know, to get your temporary mm -hmm, visa. Mm -hmm. um, does he need apostle documents? With 180 days? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like the guy with 180 days, right? And then they told him, hey, you got to go get your temporary visa. Oh, no, no. So he doesn't uh, need it. The FMM. That's it. So nope. he doesn't need Okay, so if you economic solvency, you don't need it. You don't need it if you're, you're going to nope. get it through that way. You don't need it for a uh, work visa. That's we right. Don't really, we don't really talk about our whatever work visas. That's right. Because That's work, right. You know what? Can we talk about the work visa real quick? Sure. How do you qualify for a work visa? And is it even... Okay, there's you know, applicable or yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, first, first you need to to um, um, get or or contact a company that that um, has something uh, a thing called expediente básico or basic file. Okay, okay. That's that's a file that um, a, a Mexican corporation ha have with uh, the immigration office. And that file only is only good for um, if you hire uh, foreigners. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, some businesses have the ability to yes. hire foreigners. That's right. Okay, and then those companies that hire a foreigner, again, you, it, it's easy to obtain a visa, right? That's right. Because basically, they'll you know they can just get it through. What they'll do is uh, they'll they'll write you a letter for you to send to uh, uh, the Mexican consulate nearest you. Okay. Up, uh, you, you'll have to ask for the appointment, bring that letter and all the documents from that from that Mexican company, which is the basic, basic file or Expediente Básico, saying that they want to hire you because of your skills and knowledge. Okay. okay? And this is very important because if I have, for example, I can hire attorneys because yeah. I have a law firm, okay? Yeah. But if the person I send a letter to in my documents doesn't have a clue about law or it's an engineer or whatever, yeah. uh, doesn't have the skills to work for my company, then at the consulate, They'll say no. Yeah. Like why is a law firm no. hiring an engineer? Exactly. Yeah, so, so basically, a work visa is, uh, let's say, you know, you're in X Y Z country, whatever country you're in, and a Mexican company, a mm -hmm. Mexican corporation mm -hmm. hires you, uh, and you're like, oh, I, I don't know what to do about a visa. Then they'll just take care of it. It's as That's simple right. as that. That's right. But like, it's not like if you're out here on a tourist visa, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, can I, uh, can I apply? Can I apply for a, for a working work visa? visa with some company? Okay. It, Yes, you can, oh, okay. but but okay. but let's say you have the skills, you will have to fly to a Mexican consul. Oh. You can go to Belize, Cuba, Florida. So it's a pain in the butt. Exactly, because yeah. you have the skills. For example, if I want to hire Jose as as one of my um, paralegals, if he have if he has the skills, I can have uh, give him a letter. But he 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 should. Fly to yeah, Florida he, he or still has to, yeah, Cuba. Still has to, or, yeah, you still got to get it done through the Mexican. Exactly. Country. Okay. The working visa, you cannot apply for the working visa inside Mexico. Mm. You have to uh, uh, take this uh, or do this interview at the consulate. So basically, it's uh, not even worth it really for most people. Most people, no, really, yeah. no. If you have the skills and, and, and you have the company that can hire sure. you. Sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but it's not. Yeah. It's not every case. It's not like a thing. So, um, but yeah, most people just go through um, to get their temporary or permanent. Right, right. Yes. right. And then there's a million ways to qualify for those. That's right. That's Amaze right. one wants to know. Um, he goes, "Oh, that was amazingly helpful." You know, thanks. So with the marriage stuff, you know, and he goes, and he goes, or he or she, they say, um, "Do you offer services to navigate the office, the INM immigration office?" Of course. So, yes, yes, he does. So, that's that's and, what we do. Yeah. 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 So you know, the, you know, long story short, we're here to answer your questions and help you out, but also, you know, like I say before, if if uh, the information is not enough, or you yourself need to, you know, extra help, you know, for whatever reason, you, you got, you, you know, you can hire me, someone on the team, or him. You know what I mean? I mean yes, in the sir. case of lawyer situations, you hire him. <laughs> you know, but that's what we're talking about immigration stuff. You know, he's basically the one, you know, that takes care of all that. So, um, 
Shelia, Shelia. Anyway, sorry, Shelia. I, I, I... Shaila. Anyways, all right. She says um, we're driving from Tucson, Arizona. Is there a certain paperwork that you need for the SUV? So the I'm guessing they're driving in an SUV, crossing the border, and yeah, you need tip. You need your tip paperwork. And do you know how to get right, it? Right, you know? right. They will ask you to pay a a, a permit to drive. Uh, to take your car to your SUV into the country, you'll pay like it's around uh, five hundred dollars. It's less than five hundred dollars. Um, they will ask you to pay at Banjercito. Banjercito is a bank uh, that is um, is the armies at uh, the Mexican Army's bank. Oh, Banjercito, okay. that's the name. You'll have to go there and pay uh, four hundred something dollars, less than five hundred dollars to get a permit to drive your car into the country, all right? So you'll get a receipt, you'll get a permit, and welcome in. Also, you'll get a, a stamp on your, on your passport and probably a paper visa, which is the FMM. Pro Why I say probably? Because it depends on how many days you would like to stay in the country. If you're staying over 180 days, they will give you this FMM. Now, what happens with this uh, payment of uh, uh, 500, less than $500? There are uh, two, two things. First, if you drive back to Arizona before the 180 days expire, they will give you a uh, part of that money back, okay? If not, then you'll have to get a tip, what, what, just, uh, what Jose just said. What is the TIP or TIP in Spanish, it's a permit based on your visa or on your residency. If you get a uh, temporary residency, then you can apply for this TIP or this extension of your, your car's um, registration. Let's, let's call it registration, all right? So once you get your, your uh, uh, residency, you can use that residency and make it uh, or extend that residency to your to your car through that TIP document. That tip document must be done at a customs agent or a port, an entrance. In he, here in in uh, in the Yucatan, we have Progreso, which is uh, the nearest um, aduana or customs agent agency to our main city or to Merida. <clears throat> So once you get your, your residency, you get the tip and you're okay. If they ask you or if they stop you because you have plates from different country, different state, you can show your tip, you show your, your, uh, your card, your temporary residency, and that's it. That's all you have to do. I hope I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I was clear on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, or tourist visa was or whatever. I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or tourist visa or whatever visa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, someone was saying, um, is it easier because they want to get their citizenship through mm -hmm. family? You know, uh, you know how we right, right, about right. that, whatever. Um, uh, is it easier to do it in a consulate or easier to do it here? Okay, um, so so you have a family member, mom, dad, or grandparents that that were born here in Mexico, and you want to apply for your dual citizenship. What I would recommend is to have all your documents translated certified or notarized and get the apostilla and do it here in mexico okay easier than the consulate it, totally yes. okay um now so and again i you don't have to answer this because i know that you know there's well you know i'll, I'll leave it up to you because everyone's a unique situation okay? yeah, yeah yeah because i know everyone's a little different so i just wanted to give them a little warning but someone is asking you know basically um, he wants citizenship from, you know, he wants citizenship. He's from the U.S. His parents are born in Mexico. He mm -hmm. has all the birth certificates um, and apostles. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't want to go to the consulate here. So what is the fee? He doesn't want, he doesn't, doesn't want to go to the consulate? Yeah, yeah. So he just, you know, yeah, yeah again, he wants to just do it in Mexico, like you were just saying. Oh, so okay. So somebody else, another question. But basically somebody wow. wants to, uh, you know, uh, basically someone, again, through family structure. As, uh, as to, you said. So what's your fee to do that? Okay. Now, again, you, you don't have to. Uh, as you said, yeah, uh, each case is different. Um, I will need to go to those papers and see what you have and what you don't have. Sometimes we think we have everything and, and we're missing something. 
but uh, reach yeah. out and I'll, I'll, I'll let okay. you know what you, you must do. You can do it on your own if you want to, or I can give you an estimate on, yeah. you and know. So look, yeah, long story short is that yeah. that's why you have a consult, you know, with him because there's all kinds of different situations. You know, you might do a consult thinking you might need to hire him and you can do it yourself immediately. You're like, oh, wait, you know, yeah, he yeah. just says, hey, you, all you got to do is do this, this and that. Or, you know what I mean, you might think you have all your paper, you have everything, and yeah, then he's like, no, nah, hey, all the horses, all the, you need this, you need that, you need, you need that. Yeah. And so depending on your actual situation, it will depend on how much you get charged, you know what I mean? Because it just depends, you know what I mean? That's how right. long they gotta, you got to work That's with right. it. And, uh, you know, he's a lawyer, you know what I mean? They get paid, you know, I don't know. But well, get, today, Jose's paying my yeah. fee, so. Sure, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You ask. <laughs> no, but you know what I mean, yeah. So, but it was a little different because, again, you know, different fees as well, right, I guess, uh, right. for different situations. Yes, so, yes. So, again, if, right. if, you're, right. if you're really interested, just inquire with right. him, and he'll be more than Reach happy. Out. Yeah, he'll be more than happy to, to, you know, give you an estimate on, you know, uh, whatever yes. you're, you're going to yes. be. Okay, um... Let me see. Uh, Armida says, I have an FMN, whatever, but I am married to a Mexican. We've been married, we've been married for 27 years, and now I'm in Mexico. How can I apply for residency? Well, so, okay. So basically... I have a... Yeah, so basically... Ba FMN, basically, yeah, someone is but married. But I'm married to a Mexican. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, our... Arminda, Ar Arminda, did you did you get married in Mexico? No, no. I mean, they got married twenty seven years ago, but now they're in Mexico. You know what I mean? But, but she's Mexican. But he's, he's Mexican. One is Mexican, and the other one is only on a tourist visa. Okay, he's Mexican, but you get married somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. So basically, it's easy. Just approve. What you need to do is to to uh, to have your marriage certificate translated to Spanish, get it notarized, get it. Get the apostilla or or get it legalized. The apostilla. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and have your your husband's um, birth certificate from Mexico, the original one. Okay. Make sure that the names are the same as his passport or the same as the marriage certificate. Because sometimes, some especially in the U.S. Uh, normally in the U.S. they only use the first name and the first last name. But here in Mexico we have four names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have first name, middle name, last name, and the last, last name, all right? So um, just make sure that all the names are exactly the same. Translate those documents. Get it uh, notarized. Get it legalized. Uh, sorry, get apostilla and... Now, with your FMM, you can apply for a permanent residency because you're married to a Mexican, all right? Um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, again, just uh, reach out and I'll be, I'll be honored to, to help you guys, for okay. sure, uh, so for I, sure. I got a question here real quick uh, by Rob Borden. <coughs> uh, Borden. Um, he says, um, keep up the great work, obviously. Yeah, thanks, okay, but... Uh, Thanks. Shout out to you. But uh, he goes, he's trying to get an air RFC. Any advice? RFC is, is that for taxes? Or? Oh, dude. But that's that's a, a thing, difficult right? one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the RFC okay. is, is your tax information. Is your tax ID. That you, get, that you get at the SAT. Yes. Okay. Now, but before, because, you know, before you even answer that question. Who needs to do that? Because a lot of people are under the misconception that everybody needs to do that. But that's not really the case, right? No, it's not the case. So basically, just real quick, <clears throat> who needs to do that? Only the people that ma, th that pay taxes here in Mexico. Okay, and who are those people? Meaning, if you're doing business here in Mexico, um, if you're getting a, a, a pension from the Mexican government, if um, if you have, for example, a corporation that makes you money, uh, dividends, then yes. In Mexico. In Mexico, yes. You own a house. If you own a, a house, property or property. If you own a property or a house, throughout a uh, trust or a corporation, and you are renting the house and you're receiving money into a Mexican bank account, Mexican bank account, then you have to pay money because you're making money in Mexico. Bro, come but on. listen, listen to this. Me? So because I thought, I thought. That listen, yeah, no, yeah. listen, listen yeah. to this. Uh, the thing is this. Uh, the, the, the tax law is very clear. Yeah. Okay. If you make money here in Mexico, 
if you have a business here in Mexico, you have to pay taxes here in Mexico. That's it. If you live in Mexico as your main residency, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate after I say this. Because the law says if you are living in Mexico and it's your main residency, you should pay taxes. But, and there's a big but. If you said your income is from Mexico and you're not paying taxes in your own country. Okay. Now, here's the, here's the thing. If you're still paying taxes in the U.S., Canada, Europe, Australia, whatever, that tax payment, whatever you pay to your country, you get a receipt. Right. You get a document. And we have an international treaty for no double taxation. So you don't have to pay taxes for something that you didn't receive in Mexico. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, again, you're a retiree <clears throat> and you make money, you know, by, you know, again, your social security check, your pension. Um, your, and, and you're the, paying taxes in the U.S. Yeah, and you're paying taxes on that. Make sure you do your taxes there and you don't have to do taxes That's here. right. And That's again, right. even if you own a home... Again, you, this case has to be extraordinary for you to even have to pay tax on that home. Because, well, let's say, but what about property tax? You don't need an RFC for No, uh, property so taxes, like, yeah. So basically, property tax, you don't need an <coughs> RFC. Um, if you're going to buy a car, register in your name like me, you don't need an RFC. What about a bank account? Number okay, one. if you set up a, bank, a Mexican bank account, now here's the thing. And I said it before. If you have a Mexican bank account and you receive money from your business then yes oh but if you don't if it's if just you, your personal if 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 it's your personal and the only the only money that you receive is from your personal bank account in the US all you have to do is inform okay you do need an, a, a tax id but it is my it is my money I already paid taxes in the US so you don't need an RFC so you don't have to double you don't have to pay taxes for that money. Look at that. It's already paid. Okay. But you need the document saying that already paid taxes. Okay. Okay. Yes, it's no big deal. So you can actually go to the bank. <laughs> but every again, every case is, is a little different. Yeah, of course. But long story short, you can even get around getting the RFC because I had to get it only for the bank. That's the only time I needed to use it. Exactly. But if I would have known that, I would have just done that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But whatever, it's the same thing. You know what I mean? Like it back then, it wasn't that big a deal to get in the paper. You know? Now right, it right, is. right. Yeah, because now it is. Everyone is going crazy. I'm not going to have my RFC, and I need it. And so what about the CFE? Because some people they are they want to set up CFE in their own. Oh, okay. So you need Good it. Good question. You need it. Okay. Yes, CFE, I know. By the way, CFE is the light bill. Which again, we're going to talk about in another episode in the future. Yeah, because that's the that's the real estate part of it. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 because like for no, because a lot of people, meaning like, let's say you're coming out here to rent, um, a lot of people think, oh, you're going to put utilities. Oh no, 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 under your name. Yeah, I talk about it in a future episode. Don't worry, I don't want to spoil it. But long story short, you don't need, um, you need to, you don't need to put any of these things in your name. But in the case that you do need to put a light bill, CFE bill, in your name, do you still need the RFC? No, no, you don't. The only reason to have a tax ID or RFC with your electricity bill is if you own the house and you want to sell it. Oh, okay. But that's here's it. the trick. And this is free, guys. Yeah. Because when you sell a house, yeah. you should pay a, a tax. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should. Yeah, yeah. But if you have a, 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 an electricity bill with your name on it and your tax ID on the back part with a, a chain, a digital chain on the back part, which makes it a, a an invoice from the electricity company, which is the CFE, yeah. then you can show that this is my main house or this is my house. So I don't have to pay taxes if that's the house. If, if that's the first house you sell within the three years from that. Place. Yeah, so basically if your house, if, you, if it's under, under, you know, under, <coughs> paperwork, under the paperwork, it's your main residency, mm -hmm. you don't got to pay, you know, you say, so again, because the thing is a lot of people are like, oh my God, but CFE is yeah. asking me for my, listen, they yeah. can ask you for a unicorn. You can simply say, <laughs> I don't have I don't. it and I'm not going to get it. And you know what they do? Okay. 
the same right. thing. You know what I mean? It's right, not a big right, deal. You right. know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people that might ask. It's for not it. mandatory to yeah. have a, a tax ID to get uh, the Anything. electricity bill in your name. Okay, no, so there you not. go. I mean, that is it's a not. very valuable question. No, because, okay, not. so long story short, the only people, which is a tiny group of people that really need. You know to you know to get their uh, RFC, mm -hmm. which is you know um, the tax ID, is only again the people that are doing business in Mexico straight right, up, straight right, up. Right, because right. you can even buy a home and live in your home, and you don't even have to provide right. that or pay for anything. Because according to the Constitution, to the law, they cannot tax you on your home. They can't tax you on certain things, right? Right, and right, certain, right. And that's a thing. You know, just like you know, you only pay property taxes and and you pay your electricity sure. bill, and that's yeah. okay. Property tax again, you don't <coughs> again you get a bill. And saying, when you sell your house, because you have yeah. an income. So again, yeah, exactly. When you sell your house, that's when you got to. But if you have your, an electricity bill with your name on you don't it, need it and and the tax ID showing that is your house, you won't pay a capital gains. Yeah, and that tax ID. But call me uh, yeah, and after four and a half millions, you will. But if not, we can. Yeah. So long story short, work it you know out. I mean, yeah, the, yeah, it's 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 just a complicated mm -hmm. issue in the sense of like the only real people that might want to don't really, get me into taxes, bro. Yeah, 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 you'll be I'll talking just, out there. Yeah, we'll, oh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about it in the future because there's a lot, there are people. I know there are people out there oh, that do have crazy. tax situations in Mexico, yeah. and they do need to talk about that. But we'll save that for another episode. We'll save the taxes right. uh, for a whole episode in the future, or another live stream where you can ask your questions. Um, today we didn't really go through many questions, and I'll be honest, it's because we had a I had a bunch of things that I just wanted to answer because there's so many of you yeah. that are asking me the same question so i was like let me just make a video you know with him you know where he can answer all these questions if we got time we'll go through the questions and we did um and so far so good and i think so far you know i think a lot of the questions that i'm seeing in the chat are questions that have already we've we have already answered if you haven't heard the answer watch the video again rewind the video you know it's a dvr thing whatever you can just check it out again and that's it um let me see Guys, the the um, coffee is we're, kicking we're, in. Can I just take yeah, yeah, a, uh, take a break? Oh yeah, yeah. He's gonna take, okay, so he's gonna take a quick little uh, bathroom break. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. While I look over the questions real quick, okay. Um, and I'm gonna see. And by the way, if you have any more last minute questions, please, you know, now's the time to ask them. And I'm just gonna go with uh, whatever questions you know um, pop up. Um, we're gonna go in order of uh, appearance, and we're just gonna go through lightning round, all right? And we're gonna go through all that. So. So please get your questions ready if you have any questions, okay? A little music in the background while I read some of these to see if we've answered them or not. Street says, how can you buy a registered car in Mexico with only a tourist visa legally? You cannot. You cannot. And he'll confirm that in a second, but you need at least a permanent residence. I just did it myself. So you cannot put anything... But you cannot put anything in your name, um, no property really in your name, like when it comes to like a car, unless you're in permanent residency. But we're going to let him, we're going to ask, you know, we're going to ask him, okay? Uh, Forever says, I just saw a video that the law changed in August and then you can't get a Mexican bank account with the RF thing. Sorry, I think it was called. No, but again, we've already explained, and, and I think we can, we already answered that, <clears throat> that you don't need the RFC. Um, again, you know, the bank can ask you questions and demand certain things, but if you know your laws, you know your rights, it'll be very easy for you to, you know, get around that. It's not that big of a deal. Remember, we're not dealing with uh, the US or Canada or any of these other countries in which your rights are restricted and um, you know things are a little different out here they actually respect and um, they have to follow the, the, the laws they have to follow but again they can prompt you to provide them with a tax ID they can prompt you to do this this or that um, but it's up to you whether you're gonna do it or not okay because again you don't have to under law you don't have to okay so quick question um, because someone says, can they buy or, and register a car in their name with only a tourist visa? No. 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 Answer it, is no. Only permanent, right? Temporary or permanent. Yeah. Yes. And so, but long story short, people can still drive a car. You know, they can kind of like, because I know people, they buy a car, mm -hmm. but the car is still under the owner's name mm -hmm. and they can drive around legally, right? Yeah. You have like, well, the law says you have 15 days, 15 days to make the change. Yeah. But people uh, do it for months. Yeah. Um, you cannot register a car with an FMM. No, not register. But like, for example, like I, I'm, I have a car mm -hmm. rental company, mm -hmm. okay. and the car and the car's under my name. I can rent it out to somebody, right? Oh yes, yes, you can. So basically, a tourist can come out here and rent the car <coughs> from a guy, and basically they're driving their car around. 
Yeah, and but legally, if, legally, if, no if the question is if if you can register a car in your name with an FMM with no. a tourist visa, is no. No. Okay, so we're gonna do lightning no. round. Okay, so that way we're just gonna finish off the questions and then be out of here. All right, this is already getting late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but let me see. Um, yeah, and, and so look, I just bought a car without an RFC. Okay, well, I'm gonna make a video in the future talking about that. But again, I just registered a car. <laughs> it was, it yeah. was crazy, it was right? Pure hell. <laughs> but, but again, it's just the DMV. All right, well, we'll get it. All right, it's, right. Not, it's not out here. But I think um, I came late to the video. Can you uh, can you tell us about tax-free shipping? I don't know, shipping stuff down there, tax-free. No, we'll, we'll save that for the tax issue or for the tax episode. Okay. Um, I think we're, um, someone's just asking a quick question because I, I get this question asked a lot, but again, we already answered it. We're going to answer it again. Can I sell my beaded jewelry on the streets of Mexico without having an RFC? So someone Come again, so, so, okay. Someone wants, someone's an artist. Okay. And they make like jewelry okay. and they want to sell it on the street. Can they do it without an RFC? Technically, Leg legally. Okay, legally and technically, legally you cannot. Okay, but technically yes. <laughs> yes. Because okay, but meaning you know you. But if that, they if they if they catch you. Oh. But how but, but but how would they catch you? Then no one's ever going to ask you for your tax. Well, ID. if you're selling, yeah, but if you're selling your stuff on the streets and so and the police officer can't ask you. Yeah. For a license, like yeah. a business license yeah, or, a yeah, yeah. or a vendor's license, selling license. They're easy to obtain, right? They're very easy to obtain. Yeah. But long yeah, story yeah. short, your long story short, but by the way, well, let's just say they catch you without it. What happens? Do they give you a fine or is it like a major thing? Oh, well, it will be major because first of you're all, foreigner. yeah, you're a foreigner. You don't have a, a, a residency. You don't have a tax ID. You're selling stuff on the street. As a tourist. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you'll be in trouble. Okay, so but yeah, but, yeah. but let's say you are in a in a permanent or temporary residency. All you have to do is get your your tax ID, and get a permit to sell on the street. Okay, so easy peasy. So basically, you cannot do anything on a tourist visa. You're a tourist, okay. Mm -hmm. But if you're on a temporary or permanent, pretty easy. Yeah, it's really easy to get a license. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah you have to go get a tax ID number. At yeah, that point, but no big deal as well. What I would recommend if you're an artist and 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 you want to sell your 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 uh, art your stuff, first to get a temporary residency, mm -hmm. get the tax ID, and uh, uh, take your your products. Or if you want to sell it yourself, fantastic. Or take your products to, to a store because there's a lot of stores yeah, they can, selling. Yeah. yeah, they can sell your products uh, for you um, and you can still make them, <coughs> sell them, and probably make, get, money, make yeah. money and not have to worry about all exactly. the other implications exactly. and all the uh, legal implications. Okay? Right, right, so, right. Okay, all right. So I think that was a pretty good okay. It was, yeah. Okay, pretty good question. That was something else, yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay, I think, we're, I think we answered enough questions. We've already been going for like almost an hour and a half. Okay, so guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, we had a thank great show. Thank you so much. Today. Yes, yes, we had a great show today. You answered a lot of questions. You know, yes, I, I thank for. you. I thank you as well because it helps me as well. Because like at the end of the day, you know, you guys ask me so many questions, and uh, some of them I, I can answer, um, but I don't have the full answer, and he does because he's an actual lawyer that knows his uh, stuff about hey, all these things. Uh, by the way, yeah, the yeah. last time they asked me uh, if I was a real lawyer because the way it looked. Okay. And I showed my... my oh, remember right. right? Yeah. If you want to show it again, yeah. whatever, whatever no. you guys talk I mean, if you want yeah. me to show my... my, my uh, yeah. um, Degree. Lawyers, yeah, yeah everything. You know, I, I, I will. He has his degrees all hanging in his <laughs> office. Yeah, if if you want me to show my my ID, please just. Uh, oh, do the yeah, check out the yeah. other yeah other video where we, we or did. just write it down. Just yeah, yeah show your ID and I I, I will. Oh, I will yeah, love they'll, they'll to. I'll say it in a second. <laughs> if you want him to show his ID, tell I will. Us, tell us I have it. Thing. I have it here with me. You know, because the last time, yeah. But yeah, guys, look. Long story short, at the end of the day, um, you know, this gives a lot more validity. Okay, to the things that I say, because there's, again, I'll say it, there's other people out there, other news out there that are spreading news and saying things, you know, um, but they don't have any real proof. The proof that they say is like, oh, we got it from the U.S. consulate. What the hell does the U.S. consulate have to do with Mexico? Right. Um, or I heard it on, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or, hey, I used to be an ex-police officer. Again, an ex-police officer from another country. Yeah. Again, what the hell do they know about, <laughs> you know, the laws, you know, or whatever. That's right. You know, so, you know, so at the end of the day, you know, I don't, I don't, 
to me, it's like this, you know what I mean? Like I, I am a, a certain person and I talk a certain way and I present things a certain way. But when it comes down to it, when we really need to get the nitty gritty and the real information and know what's really going on, I get the expert. I get the guy that really knows what's going on. Thank and you. I just have him speak, okay? And have him, like he, he's done many times um, where, you know, again, he, he, it, his words speak for themselves in the sense, yeah, I know, right? In the sense that at the end of the day, you know, you know that it's coming from a trusted source. You know, where, again, you know, he is a practicing lawyer that literally helps a lot of you guys and will help more of you people. Um, and it's somebody I'll that you're, gonna, yeah, you're, you're most likely going to be trusting in, um, mm -hmm. again, as opposed to just some YouTuber or some post that you saw on Facebook or something that you read on whatever site and things like that. So, again, you know, I, I, I really thank you because thank you, it takes a thank lot, you. you know, to come out here and be on a live show and, you know, talk to people live and get all this stuff done and all that good stuff. So, you know, they got best lawyer in Mexico. Right. Oh, thanks. Thank you. you. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Forever Rome's has this quick question. You know, he goes, how hard or easy is it to get a permit to sell food it's the same thing basically you get a business license and then you got to get a special permit to sell food but it's easy easy that's it okay the only thing is you know then you're gonna start, the room, yeah, start yeah. doing the tax thing that's it but other than that it's easy but um but yeah i think we answered you a guys. bunch of your questions even though thank you so much anything. guys so but anyways really thanks again it. guys so and, any, and, any, and thank uh, who said best lawyer in mexico uh, crazy, uh, cra boy radio. crazy boy radio thank you so much but a lot of people have said that okay a thank lot, you and, and everyone everyone out there thank you so much okay. i really appreciate it and by the way do you want to thank add you. any last words meaning um whatever you need where can guys they find you where can they find you oh, yeah, yeah well um i'm gonna leave a link down below yeah uh send me an email i'll be honored to answer your questions um or to uh, Help guide get you, you. Yeah, uh, guide you and, and get you a consultation uh, uh, appointment, whatever. Just let me know and I'll be glad to help you. Cause, awesome. Because the thing is this, and I said it on, on, on our last uh, uh, interview, the reason I started uh, doing law or the reason I studied law is because I love the law, everything about it. That's right. Then I, uh, I studied tax law. The reason I, st I studied tax law is because I love my people mm. and I love hitting the government. That's right. Uh, you heard that, right? Basically, he's one of us. You know, he doesn't like the government very much. And he knows, he knows taxes are not bueno. And basically, yes. he, he wants to help all of you guys. Make exactly. sure you do your taxes right when yes, you got to do it. Exactly. Gotta do. You know, the fair. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Then I moved to uh, um, immigration and real estate because I, you, you, I, this is the first time I'm going, I'm going to say this. Well, Jose knows this and, and, and the people that uh, I've been working with knows this. But my family, my, my, my grandparents on my dad's side, they moved to the U.S. Uh, 60 plus years ago. And, and having said that, um, we're foreigners in the U.S. We were foreigners in the U.S. So I know how it feels, guys. I know how it feels yeah. to, to, to uh, yeah. come to a new country and... and yeah, everything, every, all the know, new stuff. Yeah, when people are panicking or people are yeah, you know, yeah, going yeah, a little yeah. crazy. When I was bothering him, hey, oh my God, did I sign the fucking <laughs> right? You know, blah, 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 whatever. You know, and blah, I was right? just, you yeah. know. Yeah, and, we, and that's the thing. He, he gets it, which is great, man. You know what I mean? Because in that sense, Thank it's you like, right. you can remember, you know, he can, uh, he's been there. He's been in your shoes. He's been in your situation. Yeah, yeah. And he knows. Uh, I know how it feels. Yeah, he knows how it feels. How it and feels. so he can, he, you know, he can basically, you know, uh, you know, help you even more because he understands. And where others might not understand, they're like, man, why are these crazy gringos? You know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> or why are they you know panicking over this when you don't have yeah. to and then you know he, he helps you you know he helps put your mind at ease and that's why i love him because for reals and anyone that knows him that's why he's the best Thanks, because he guys. does that's, that's, he is the he's a, the greatest lawyer ever but like honestly he's also the greatest like put your mind at ease guy ever, you know? <laughs> i'll I'll, yeah. I'll tell you the truth you know like straight but we'll figure it out. That's right. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He'll tell you exactly, you know, how it is. <laughs> and then you'll give your I'll tell this is fucked. Yeah, 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 exactly. But, you know, we'll, we'll get, figure we'll, it out. We'll figure it out. And that's it. Hey, and that's that's what counts, man. That's right. Thank so you, anyway. guys. Thank you so much. So I you already really know the deal. It. All right. So, guys, if you like this kind of content, you already know what to do. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon. Yes, but more importantly than anything else, 
please stay awesome. Thanks again for watching, yeah. and we'll see you on yeah. the next one. Yeah. Right. See you later, bro. All Thank right. you, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks again. Peace. All right. Oh, shout out to the $5 donation at the end there. Thank you, thank you.